This is another Bakugou story, my darlings, and I hope you enjoy it. But before we dive right into it, as per usual, I'd like to remind you to watch this video until the end, like or dislike, and comment your favorite part of the video down below. Or in fact, comment anything down below, because this is the best way you can put me higher above in the YouTube algorithm so it pays me a little bit more. In other words, you would be indirectly supporting me. And I would greatly appreciate that. You can, of course, also share the video. If you want to support me more directly, I have a Patreon and a merch store. Links also down in the description. And to help encourage you do all of these things, here is the cute animal picture of the day. The cute animal picture of the day is here to remind you to do all of these things. Like support me, so I can feed my gacha addiction. Please, I want Ning Wong and Kiki. Those are Genshin Impact characters. Sorry about that, but yeah, I would greatly appreciate any support you could give me. One last thing before we go right into the story. I have a Discord. If you have any fan art you would like to send my way, or you write a fan fiction yourself, you can send me them right there, and I may read it for a video. I would, of course, shout you out. I mean, you deserve it. Alright, let's get right into the video. Ever since Quirks appeared, acceptance and tolerance had skyrocketed. No one was special anymore. In fact, nowadays it was more special to not be special. Because of this, however, many people could live happy lives. However, there was still one great divider in this world. And that were Quirks that were considered evil. Be it a quirk that just sounded evil, a quirk that had an easy time killing people in gruesome ways, or a mind control quirk, like yours. Your quirk, doll of flesh, allowed you to move other people's bodies. During it they were completely lucid, could scream and shout. You had to admit it was fun to watch them try resist your quirk. You were, however, limited to one person only. Interestingly enough, you were even able to take control over automatons, like the robots you used during the entrance exam. Which made you reconsider many aspects of your quirk. How did you actually control people? And now, things. But regardless of that, Having taken over one of the machines meant that you had quite an easy fare. And you almost had something similar to fun while doing so. The end result was Hero Course. Class 1A. It had taken you up until your first day to believe it. Not just being accepted, but the Hero Course? Technically, you didn't do anything. It was the robot. Luckily, it seemed as if everyone was accepting of you and your quirk on the get-go. Until the attack on the USJ happened. And the people you were with could see what your quirk really did. Maybe your abysmal physical strength and stamina made you appear more innocent to them. But seeing a buff guy villain screaming for help like a little girl while beating up his own allies really was a scary enough experience for even the students of the Hero Course to reject you. Not outright, of course. It was more avoidance. After the USJ incident, everyone was suddenly busy all the time. Momo's little study group was always full. And eventually you were sitting alone in the cafeteria. Which, if it weren't so sad, was probably really funny, considering how ram-packed the food court got. Absent-mindedly you stabbed your food. You didn't have enough money to afford today's special, and were staring at a poor excuse of a tofu steak. Despite Lunch Rush being the world's greatest cooking-themed hero, the man despised tofu and refused to touch it so his underlings prepared anything related to it. Because of that, those items were 
very cheap on the menu. You desperately hope no one saw you as a vegan. The last thing you needed was being called pretentious. Two arms suddenly hit your table and you looked up. So, is class 1 I so special now? They need their own tables. Oh god, that guy. Seriously, was being jealous of class 1A his only personality trait? Piss off, Manamoa. You growled. He scoffed and was about to say something when you activated your quirk on him. Hey, what? He shouted. But you didn't answer. You simply made him turn around and walk a few meters away. And then you made him spin his head around. You wanted to see his face when it happened. Loud enough for him to hear you say, And this is why I'm in class 1A and you're in class 1B, loser. His eyes widened when his hands reached for his pants. No, he said in disbelief. Yes, was the only thing you said as you made him take his pants off. The end result of your little prank was the entire cafeteria burst out into laughter with a few exceptions of goody two-shoes heroes. And you got detention for quirk abuse. Once you entered the detention classroom, however, you got the applause of two of the students there. Surprisingly, it were Denki Kaminari and Bakugo Katsuki, two guys from your class. Uh, where's the teacher? Yastafa settling down on a table far away from the other two. Snap's busy dealing with stuff. Uh, I don't know. Grunted Bakugo. So Snap was the teacher in detention. Good to know. Soon after, the three of you went silent. Occasionally, though, Denki would try to get your attention just to give you a thumbs up over what you did. But you didn't care much for that. You knew that by tomorrow he would ignore you again, just like the rest of the hero cause. You yawn. What do we even do here? You asked this interested. Homework, chuckled Kaminari. <laughs> As if, you mused. You leaned back in your chair, staring at the empty table. How long does he usually take to come back? You asked. Dunno, came from Bakugo. First time either of us are here. You raised an eyebrow. Why are you guys even here to begin with? Bakugo laughed. <laughs> Pikachu, you thought this... <laughs> Pikachu, you thought this quirk was more destructive than mine. It is, grumbled Denki. It is less focused and can easily take on multiple people. You snickered. So you two were fighting. Got it. I won, shouted Denki triumphantly. And Bakugo punched his table. You only got the first hit in! Denki giggled. See? Screw you! Both of our quirks can take out people in a single hit, but mine can actually spread them across a wall and then take out the wall with them! You blinked. Somehow that was the hardest thing you ever heard. The two boys kept bickering at each other, with you occasionally throwing a dumb comment in that irritated Bakugo and made Denki laugh. That was until he got a phone call and excused himself. Now you were alone with the explosive blonde. You two were quiet for a few minutes. It seemed as if Denki was the catalyst of any conversation. Your quirk's pretty good too. He eventually mumbled, just barely loud enough for you to hear. You looked over at him with a smile. You were about to say thank you when you noticed him blushing, which turned your bored frown upside down. With an amused grin, you looked at him. What was that? You mused. I said your quirk's pretty good too. He shuffled in his chair. 
Saw what you did to that dumb curse one beast, snob. He gave a quick chuckle before looking over at you. Honestly thought you'd get expelled for then. You giggled. I thought so too, honestly. Aizawa seems like the kind of guy who would do such a thing on a daily basis. Bakugo shrugged. I mean, I had rumors about him suspending an entire class for not being good enough or something like that. A heavy feeling began to settle in your gut. Maybe you did just barely manage to avoid that. I wonder what made him not do that. You mumbled. And Bakugo shrugged. Whatever it was, I'm glad it didn't happen. You smiled. And why is that, Bakugo? You teased. Don't want one of you idiots to be kicked out. <laughs> was your only reply. Guess you like us more than you'd like to admit, right? He chuckled. Where's the fun in being the best when there's no one to compare yourself to? Besides, control cards like yours are kinda dope. You scratched your chin. Then, why are all of you ignoring me constantly? He shrugged. Hey, me. To be honest, I want to be hit by a quirk so I can see if I can fight it. You chuckled. <laughs> you can't fight it. He gave you an angry look. What do you mean? Are you calling me weak? You shook your head. Actually, no, I'm calling you dumb. He angrily slammed his fist on the table. What? He spouted. I mean, it's me intruding on your brain, and so far no one had the brain muscles to fight it. I mean, Monomo almost pulled his dick out. He burst into a violent fit of laughter at the memory, before standing up. Confused, you looked at him. I think I know I can get you to use it. With a confident smirk, he approached you, while letting his hands crackle with his quirk. Your heart skipped a beat, and you jumped up, taking a few steps back, until your back hit the wall. When he was only a few inches from you, his hand hit the wall right next to your head, and he leaned his head right in front of your face. You could feel his hot breath tickle over your face. Still, he had this stupid smirk spread across his stupid face. You blushed hard, and your muscles tensed up. What are you doing? You squeaked. His other hand moved right towards your face, small crackles erupting from his skin. Do it, he growled. A devious thought plopped up into your brain. What if you... You grinned. Are you sure about that, Lara boy? You asked almost seductively. He gulped, but his expression stayed the same. Fine. With a quick flick of your wrist, you activated your quirk, forcing him to take one last step forward and making his lips press onto yours. Judging by his grunts, he did try to fight it, yet his own lips betrayed him. He allowed it. You even turned off your quirk ten seconds into the kiss. He only noticed it himself when he wrapped his arms around you. Who knew that the explosive blonde had a thing for you? Slowly, gently, he let go of you. Now you can turn off that stupid quirk of yours. He said almost shyly with a blush. You suppressed a giggle. <laughs> I don't think so. 